and gentlemen. Oh, okay. Let's go. Listening to the Cool Black Nerd Podcast, presented by Say What Radio. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number fourteen of the Cool Black Nerd Podcast. This episode is Silicon. As we keep moving along the table of elements, bringing our little conversations to you. I am your host, Jules. I'm here with Justice, and we are back finally after one month of. I was gonna say it was a hiatus. But Justice told me to just be honest with y'all. So here's the deal. I was sick for like a week, maybe two weeks. Didn't want to record and be coughing all over the episode. And then after that, man, life happens. And then we would say we were going to record. And then, man, people would be sleepy or I might get hungry. And, you know. <laughs> Let me just say this. I'm saving y'all in some instances because I'm on Jules all the time. about. Actually, I'm actually on everybody in the Say What crew about that. Very, very hard. But. Like you said, life happens. But the last thing you want is to hear a hangry Jules. I just want to let y'all know that. See, I think it would be okay. But, it, you know, so. it is what it is. I want people to come back to this. I feel you. I want people to come back to it as well. So I'm going to make a commitment again to try and be far more consistent with the recording. I would ask that, you know, you guys interact with us on social. Let us know how you're feeling, what you like, what you don't like. Stay on me. Uh, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> Shout out to everybody that I work with or just friends that know about the podcast. I will say that they have been very into holding me accountable for episodes <laughs> uh, happening or not happening. They actually tell me a lot about what they want to hear on the episode. So, in fact, one of the topics that we will be discussing today was actually given to me by a coworker. So I will give you a shout out at the appropriate time. And uh, let's jump into this thing. Place where I want to start, just some news that I saw recently with Bungie. A couple of changes that they're going to make to Destiny 2 whenever that next update hits. But really the big one I want to talk about is they are getting rid of loot boxes in the sense that it's still available, but they're free. So they're going to have a battle pass pretty similar to Fortnite. And they have these little Ingrams that they call and it kind of gives you random cosmetic drops out of it. But they used to be for sale. Like you could get a pack of them for $5 or $10 or whatever it was. But they're going away from that model in favor of hey, if there's something that you want to buy in the store, you just go buy it. Like, it's not going to be, you know, you got to take a spin on the slot machine trying to get what you want. And I think that's a good step. Yeah, moving away from the loot boxes, which seem to be kind of like a tainted thing for a lot of, well, actually just in general, if you hear loot boxes or if you hear some sort of monetization, it kind of just, most gamers are like, on high alert at that point in time. And for good reason. We've seen some very egregious monetization schemes that are out there. And so I applaud Bungie for actually taking the time to do that. There are some EA in particular, if you guys heard, well, you've heard the podcast in the past, and we've talked about that, some of the schemes and the way that they've actually come up with things like the uh, 2K20, which is basically like a virtualized casino for the most part. But another thing, a lot of places or countries, so to speak, are cracking down on this. So I'm thinking that people are starting to see that and kind of move away from it. But is that a good thing? And I ask that because of certain patents that are being held by Sony in particular. One of the patents that I've heard about is what they call interactive ads. So you're playing a game or whatnot, and you know how you'll get to portions where it's loading or whatever. What they held a patent on is at that point in time, something will come across the screen, let's say, for instance, for McDonald's or whatever, and it just stays on the screen and it will not go away until you are like, hey, PlayStation, McDonald's or something like that. And then it'll go away. So you have to actually interact with the ad in some way, shape or form for it to go away. So that's one that I'm just like, are you serious? Yeah, I don't like that. So I would not have a problem if it was just an ad that was on during the I mean, I probably would a little bit. But it wouldn't be as bad, something that I have to respond to somehow. I feel like that should probably be illegal. I don't know why I feel that way. But think about it. If you play any of the mobile games, that's kind of how it is. I mean, yeah, that's what I was going to say about the so, ad being there in general. I'm kind of used to that from mobile games. But to, honestly, 
I take that back. It's not even mobile games. You know how back in the day when you would be on the internet and those pop-ups would just come up, it'd be the same thing. So just while you're playing a game. But another one, which I think this one actually, the one that the interactive ad actually, if I'm not mistaken, is back in 2014 or 2016. But they've recently... We haven't, we haven't seen it yet. No. At least not on consoles. The reason why people are kind of freaking out with this one is just the way that they tied it in for their patent application. So at this point, you're playing a game. The game gets a little bit harder as it does, because the point of it is to get into progr- to progression to pass these levels at harder difficulties. But you get to a certain point, especially in a game of like God of War, say, for instance, and you die. You die enough times or die like one or two times, something on the screen. 80% of players were able to be successful against this particular boss using this weapon. Would you like to purchase this weapon? Not would you grind for it like you usually would to achieve it. But would you like to purchase this weapon? right there on the screen. Or another portion of it is that they were going to allow you to be able to research within the game. So you can be like, you know, most of the time when we're trying to find something to beat in Destiny is saying, hey, PlayStation, tell me about this. And it'll tell you about this level and also what you can use to beat it. Not letting you find it out, but everything that you would use to beat it and how much it is. Hmm. So they're moving away from these loot boxes, but they're also trying their best to keep this monetization up, but in skeevier ways. I got you. Well, see, here's the thing for me. I would say the interactive ads and the thing where it pops up and says 80 percent of people beat it with this. Would you like to buy it? I'll call those skeevy. I will agree with you. That last one. I don't know, because I feel like that last one is like, yeah, normally I would probably just go to YouTube and see how to beat it. I think the only difference there is that it would say you can buy this thing for it. And I I think that that, to me, the greater issue wouldn't be that it tells me how to beat it and what I could use to beat it. I think the issue would be if the thing that I'm supposed to have to beat it is only purchasable with money. That would be my problem with it. Like if I don't have an option to get it some other way, that would be my issue. But I don't know. I mean, I feel like the tell me how to beat it. I think that's okay. I was fine with it once I kept reading and it stated, oh, you can buy this. Nah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So my only problem is if the only way to, to beat, to get the thing to beat it or to beat a period is to buy something, then that's definitely. Yeah. Awesome. At that point, it's just like, nah. But I thought, I still think the one where it basically kind of makes it seem as though you're getting better and you're not, that one is the one that is still in my mind, just like the worst. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I agree with that. But I know that games now with that without selling you something. Like there's some games out there where if you just die a whole bunch of times, it'll actually get easier so that you'll continue to play. Like you won't just quit. Actually, I can say this. I know, I don't know if they still do it, but Call of Duty used to do that. Like oh, if you yeah. you kept dying over and over in certain parts, every time you came back, it would be less enemies, less health. So it would actually get easier and easier until you got past it. But they don't have a campaign in theirs anymore, so I doubt that. Yeah, that's true. They did take that out. But to piggyback off that, I mean, things, speaking of stuff, probably getting worse. is coronavirus. <laughs> okay. All right. I thought you were going to say it. Birds of Prey and Suicide Squad, but um, here we go with the, okay. <laughs> Let let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so Birds of Prey came out, and the very fact that we can only say Birds of Prey rather than the entire title of the movie in and of itself tells you that it's not getting the respect that it deserves. The movie was marketed poorly, seriously poorly, and then the people that were in the movie did not do it any justice by making it seem like it's this feminist flick and everything, rather than just a good movie to watch that just so happens to have women in it. They push that agenda on an audience that is majority male and it just didn't work, unfortunately. I'm sorry, but you can't be like, oh, well, be enlightened, be better, and then give a half-assed movie and be mad because they didn't go watch it. I didn't think it was trash trash, but I do get why people are mad about it. It is disorganized, but Mm -hmm. I like the goofiness of it. I just like it for what it is. I didn't really want it to be more than that. I mean, going from the trailers, but it was the same thing with Suicide Squad, which is why I said it's on the level of Suicide Squad. That trailer pulled me in, but the movie was completely different. So this trailer did not pull me in, but the movie was. That's why I say it's on the level of Suicide Squad. It's not necessarily trash, but it's not what you're expecting, basically. I got it. So for me, I thought it was a decent movie. I wasn't mad at it. I enjoyed it, I guess. I wouldn't say that it was great. I may not even call it good, but it was good enough to watch. For that matter, you know, personally, I hated Suicide Squad. I thought it was absolute garbage. (laughs) And this movie is not. 
that's what I had to say about it. I hear you with the marketing thing. I think one thing they could have done better is just, it was a Harley Quinn movie. I mean, yeah, it had Birds of Prey in it, but the movie was about Harley Quinn and they could have just marketed it that way and it would have been fine. It probably actually would have been better, especially if Birds of Prey ended up being kind of a surprise. Kind of like Shazam, like the whole Shazam family yes. at the end. That was a very surprising part of the movie, and I think it really contributed to how people reacted to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that had they, uh, yeah, in the trailer, had they not kind of gave all of that away, or even with the title, I think that probably would have got a much better reaction. I think part of these movies is that people go into them, you kind of expect to see how they're going to expand it. Like, you just expect a sequel. From a marketing perspective, I think they need to keep some of that to themselves. Like, going into this movie, calling it Birds of Prey, it's like, okay, well, obviously, we're trying to create another team. And because it's a team, everybody can have their own movie or we're going to get a sequel. Or so, you know what I mean? Yeah. Versus this is just going to be a standalone thing. Yeah. I think it speaks to a larger issue with DC, man. Like, you got to build these things from the ground up. Like, Marvel didn't start with the Avengers. Like, don't stop starting with the team. Just build it up, man. Like, don't. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> DC, man. They're just messing up with the movies. I mean, the animated movies. The and actual think, movies, they're messing up. Shazam was good. Wonder Woman was good. And then, uh, they just messed know, it up. You know, it's funny. You're right. When they did all of the standalones, every single one worked. Even Man of Steel. I mean, for what it was, it got people talking. It still did better than Justice League. Even Aquaman. Hell, I was just about to say it. Aquaman was still a... You couldn't pay me to go see Aquaman before I actually went to go see it. I saw it for free the first time. I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to put money down to go watch it again because it was that good. But I don't understand where the disconnect is. Like you said... Their animated movies, when they're together, are still amazing. And it's just like they lose it when they come to the live action. I don't get it. Justice League cartoons, to this day, I still watch those. Yeah. I don't know. So, I, don't know what I don't know. Also, speaking of, you can really not judge a book by its cover. Sonic movie blew my mind. Did well, they not changed the it. cover. You got to remember that they changed the cover. Because no, 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 no. Even in was... general. Even in general. Even after they changed him, I was still going like, why would I want to see a Sonic movie? I didn't want to see a Sonic. <laughs> Who cares about Sonic? This came out 30 some odd years ago. I don't care about Sonic. I liked the movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'm <laughs> I was so surprised. It's doing pretty well. Very well. I'm going to have to go check it out. I'll go watch Sonic. Yeah, do that. And another movie that is still one of the ones where it's, you can't judge a book by a cover. Bad Boys. Still doing good. Bad Boys is about to hit, if I'm not mistaken, half a billion or already has hit half a billion, which is a movie whose last installment came out 18 years ago. Man, that's a pretty long time. <laughs> Dang. So, yeah. Dang, I was okay then. Will. <laughs> Take me well, back now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, getting old out here. Whatever. I'm getting awesome. I don't care what you say. Well, okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw you under that bus. <laughs> Back to the coronavirus. Yeah, so coronavirus. It's out here in these streets. <laughs> it's out it here. It is. I don't even think uh, we could give any information that wouldn't be outdated by the time this came out or just by the time that I finished my sentence. Seems like every day it's a different update. And we've had our first death here in the United States in Washington state. And they're now saying that the virus is probably being spread within the last six weeks just amongst a bunch of people. So it's probably hundreds that are actually infected. Scotland had its first. It's just crazy. Here's what's interesting about it to me is that we're getting conflicting reports like it. On one hand, it's spreading and uh, it's, people make it sound like it's bubonic plague sometimes with the way that they're reacting to it. But based on my research, at least really the truth of the matter is it's like the flu, but not to downplay its effects. You know, people do die from the flu. So it's something that we need to definitely be careful of. And I think the problem is that is something new. So there's no vaccine or cure, so to speak, for it. So it's kind of like, for the time being, if you have it, you just have to let it run its course. I think that we need to do, I think we need better information or information is not conflicting from various sources. Like you have, I'm going to say people in government that are saying, you know, it's not a big deal and that it's going to disappear one day miraculously, like literally saying, oh, it'll disappear like it's a miracle one day. I don't know why you would say that, but it is what it is. And then you have various news sources, medical professionals saying, hey, we need to be vigilant about it. It is likely going to end up being a pandemic, something that's 
going to spread everywhere. So people need to be aware of proper hygiene, making sure that you're washing your hands, covering your mouth when you cough, being careful when you're interacting with other people, and especially with travel restrictions to different countries where we have seen an outbreak happen. So I think it's something you got to be aware of, man. Like don't let certain sources kind of take you away from how serious it potentially can be for you. I think the reason why we're getting conflicting reports and information is because there's so much information coming in, kind of like what we were saying when they were announcing that the first death happened here in the United States. They initially said it was a woman. Then it was like, no, it was a man. It's just people are trying to be the first and they're trying to get all this information out to people at one time. It's kind of like a fire hose effect. Unfortunately, you're taking out too much as you're doing it and only certain bits and pieces are getting to who it needs to be. And usually by the time it gets to those people, they've already become paranoid as it is. Mm -hmm. There are people walking around in Houston with masks on already. and. Right. Yeah, I've seen that here, too. It's like, I get it. I understand that. But honestly, if you've gotten to that point where you need a mask, it's already too late. Well, and the interesting thing about that to me is the mask is actually not effective for a healthy person. Like the people who should be wearing the masks will be the people who have it. And then nine times out of 10, you're not wearing the mask properly. Like if it's not completely sealed, like the mask needs to be completely sealed. Like it would be very difficult for you then it. It would be very uncomfortable. If you running around like you shopping at Kroger every day, but you got a mask on and you just fine, you're probably not wearing it properly anyway. But it's just a lot that's coming out. And there are so many conflicting reports about how many people have been affected, how many people have actually died from it. And I hate to say it and I sound like one of those conspiracy theorists, but the timing of it just seems so convenient because, you know, you had those Hong Kong protests that were going on. And then all of a sudden this disease breaks out. Mm hmm. You haven't heard anything or even seen those Hong Kong protests. There was a Tokyo marathon that actually happened today, if I'm not mistaken. And they were expecting 38,000. And they usually have over that at the finish line. There were 200 people at the finish line. That was it. Just from these fears. So those protests and everything that were going on, it just seems just, just, just a smidge weird. Just saying. And I know my phones are probably tapped after this, but still. I hate to do this to you, but you just go ahead to sit out there on, on that branch by yourself. I'm just saying. I'm not even finna go there. Just I'm not. Saying. I'm not doing this. <laughs> okay. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Look, I guess what we really want to talk about today, and this is the topic, you know, that was inspired by one of my coworkers. I'm just going to have to say it was one of my coworkers because I don't really know if she wants a name out there like that. And then and it is what it is. With them yeah. Phones. yeah. After just as putting out <laughs> conspiracy theories for everybody. So I um, wanted to talk about Project Jigsaw. This topic is the one that was brought to me by one of my coworkers. So shout out to you. I did look into it a little bit. It's actually turned out to be something that I think is pretty interesting, especially given the times that we're in with everything being so hyper politicized, you know, being in a place where it seems like the loudest voices are often on the extreme sides of whatever issue is going on. So just to kind of give you some background, Project Jigsaw or the company named Jigsaw is from Google. It's part of Google's incubator where they just kind of go in and do these honestly really interesting projects sometimes. But for some background, a lot of people may or may not know Google has had a motto. It used to be do nothing evil or don't be evil. Um, and then they actually updated it to do the right thing. And I think Project Jigsaw probably came out of that since. So the purpose of Project Jigsaw is to tackle what they call geopolitical challenges. So there's a number of things that it tries to do. What they really want to do with it when they encounter like ethical issues across like Google's platforms or things that could result in, let's say, hate speech or people going on YouTube, for example, and kind of radicalizing themselves based on a bunch of videos that are in there. What Project Jigsaw tries to do in a number of ways combat that. So, for example, if somebody is going on YouTube and they're actively searching for extremist topics, like let's say maybe they go in there and they search for why the Holocaust was a hoax or why we should still have slavery or something like that, something that's very extreme. What this software intends to do is it will start to instead of showing them videos about that, it will show videos that refute those claims. Or if you're in an online forum, you know, people are having a debate. And if you've ever been online and looked in the comment section on anything, 
you know that that very quickly just devolves into a shouting match of ridiculousness. What it has a potential to do is send a comment score to the moderators, or it could even be something that's set up in an automated fashion that will remove comments that are likely to result in hate speech or somebody just taking the whole topic, you know, into a whole nother realm, if that makes sense. On the one hand, I see how that can be a very good thing. Like I can see how it can kind of change the discourse in society from a lot of what we see now back to things that are sensible. But on the flip side, at what point is it just straight up and down censorship? And at what point, you know, what is the potential for something like this to be put into the wrong hands? Like what's to say that they wouldn't take a perfectly factual view and start showing you the extremist version of it? I honestly think it kind of already is in that sense. And you've seen it across YouTube and people have been saying they've been having this issue as far as the algorithm for a while now. And honestly, I think it kind of just goes back to advertising. Even if that stuff actually had the kind of extremist views or whatnot, if it had people clicking on those ads, do you really think they'd bother with it? I really don't know. And that's why I don't really know if it ends up being a more altruistic view or endeavor that they're trying to do, or is it still just garnered by the money? Because you know that they have their Archangel project that they're also doing as well. And we'll talk about that on another episode, just but a brief overview of it is basically them wanting to take or have access to the information from blood tests and diseases that have been diagnosed from one of the, I think if I'm not mistaken, the number one or number two providers in lab tests and things like that, that they're already a partner with. They're wanting to have access to this information to be able to then help doctors and physicians and nurses and whatnot in diagnosing medical conditions and preemptive analysis and things like that. So right. I see what the view of it is, but the same thing is honestly the view that they saw of the internet. No one expected the internet to be like what it is right now. For the most part, everyone still sees the Internet as a good thing. But if you talk to someone, their view is still like, man, it's the Internet. Because you know that it will turn super quick. It'll be this place of happiness and goodness and be such vitriol and hate in that very same second. Right. But we'll see. Well, here's the thing. Like, So I think that what they're trying to do is combat that. And I think that fundamentally that's a good thing. And I'm going to say it this way because you're right. When you talk to a lot of people, they, you know, people understand that, hey, it's the internet. Like you can't really just go on there and be like a hundred percent certain that what I'm seeing is facts, but that's not the truth for a significant portion of people. Like there are a lot of people that will go on the internet and see something on Facebook, what just anywhere and believe it or be like, yeah, this is the right view. I saw it on the internet. I know it's true, whatever. And I, you know, that comes from confirmation bias. It comes from a lot of places. Yeah. I see what you're saying now. So that's what I mean. And they've kind of broken it down into four, I guess, areas that they're really focusing on. Disinformation. So for something like that, they're trying to create a database that goes in and says, hey, these are deep fake videos. Like if anybody's familiar with that, it's, they have a technology now where they can literally make a video of almost anyone speaking and make it say whatever they want it to say. So they have like software that goes in and analyzes it and creates like a database of what a deep fake video looks like or tries to identify a video that is a deep fake and just create a bunch of different software for people on the internet to use or moderators even maybe to be built into a service like YouTube that can identify a video as a deep fake. Harassment, we kind of talked about that one where, you know, moderators for different chat rooms or websites can go in and set up in the comments to get these scores sent to them and they can decide whether or not to take down comments and censorship and violent extremism. So just trying to identify when these things are happening. And I think really the only question, at least for me, the only question is how is it going to be? So if it's one of those things where It just takes a video down completely. Maybe I would have a problem with that. And it's tough, right? Because it depends on what the content actually is. Like to me, if it's something that's advocating immediately for violence, that probably needs to come down. But if it's just a conspiracy theory, maybe that needs to stay up with some kind of notification that, hey, it's a conspiracy. This isn't confirmed or something like that, you know? And I don't know. At least in my research, I haven't seen how it's being implemented yet. And I think. That's where, for me, there's a line that you could potentially cross. And then at that point, you get into the issue that I always question is like, well, if somebody's monitoring this, who's monitoring the monitor? Who's watching the watchers? 
And that's where I'm really kind of hesitant on this because honestly, they're kind of late to this party. I know they started this project in what, 2016, 2015? I think it originally started with a software called Perspectives in 2015. And I think that was the one where it gave like what they call a toxicity score to comments. And I see that one, it did not take the comments down on its own. It would just give each comment a score and whoever the user was could set it up so that the moderator, like, let's, I'm just making up a score, guys. I don't know what the software mm-hmm. actually looks like. Let's say they decided that anything with a score of five or higher needed to be reviewed. Then it would just let whoever the moderators yeah. are know that, hey, somebody just posted something that you need to go look at. But I think, unfortunately, at that point in time. It was too late because it had been such a overwhelming issue in that type of arena and for so long on places like Facebook, Twitter, and they were trying to combat it. But it was actually just coming up because of all the issues that were happening around the world. And in the same place where you would see where there's this revolution and they were taking down dictators and stuff, you would also see like double that when it came to the spewing of hate and just great discourse of people at that time. And I understand that they're wanting to vent. Previously, they would just vent in these dark web chat rooms or stuff like that. Now they're just able to do it on Facebook and all these other places and get, unfortunately, because of the way that their algorithm were, because they were getting so many views or just hits just to that post because people were going like, can you believe that this is happening? It was spreading like wildfire, like the fucking coronavirus, basically. So at this point, they're playing catch up to this. And I think they've kind of gotten a little too far behind. They can catch up. I do believe they can catch up, but it seems like they're going to be playing catch up for a while. And like you said, during this time, who is monitoring as they're trying to do this so that they don't cut corners on this type of stuff and end up being worse than those people that they're trying to catch? Yep. I agree with you. I don't know. It's something that I'm going to keep checking out. A lot of people may not know, but I'm like obsessed with geopolitics. I'm obsessed with the theater of it. Just the game of politics. Like I definitely have my own view. I don't try to impose my views on it. And I, you know, people who have been listening to the podcast, you know, we definitely kind of try to stay away from those type of topics. But I think that just in general, something like this is interesting for everyone, regardless of where you stand politically, just because of the impact that I think it could potentially have on the discourse that we see or, you know, like trying to rein in, I'm going to say violent extremism. Because even extremism, I don't think is necessarily a problem. It's just when you start talking about hurting other people based on whatever beliefs they may or may not have or whatever beliefs you may or may not have. I think in those cases, something definitely needs to be done. And I, I do believe that we need to get back to a just a, a more civilized discourse. I'm not even saying a politically correct one. Like we don't need to be in a place where, oh, I disagree with you. So everything you say is just 100 percent wrong and Because of that, you're obviously an idiot or whatever, whatever, you know, just pushes people over the edge. I completely agree with that, because that's one reason, you know, why you on this show and on other say what network shows, we try to give both sides of the story. We try to give both sides, let you make your own decision. We don't necessarily say, oh, you should think this, you should think that. But in any instance, we want to make you aware of this stuff. A lot of the times and since starting this podcast, I've had a few people DM me or send information going like, well, I never even knew about that. I never even thought about this. And I I love hearing that. We'll keep bringing that type of stuff to you. But in that same instance, I want you to think about when you're on the internet, when you're doing stuff, is what you're doing helping the situation? Are you putting that out? Because I don't think a lot of people really think about that when they're on the internet. They're like, there to have fun for the majority. You do have some instances where people are kind of just on there to be a little malicious and things like that. But are you helping this situation? Are you part of the problem or are you just being complicit? Because that's another facet of it too. What are we going to do? That's all I got for you. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. And it's not for you to know. It's, we're not going to come up with an answer. We still got Trump in office. We got bigger stuff to fry. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> you know what? I don't even know how to respond to that. So I think that might be the end of episode number 14, (laughs) Silicon. uh, Hey, look here. Remember what we said at the beginning. Please hold us accountable to recording, especially me, like just me. You don't even have to talk to Justice about it. But hold me accountable to getting new episodes together for you guys. Send us topics that you want to hear from us. We are going to continue keeping this thing moving and just looking forward to hearing from our listeners a little bit more. Let me know what you think. We definitely pay attention to this stuff. and. We will also keep bringing you more stuff and things to come in the future. Also, 
congratulations to one of our Say What Network podcasters as well. Phoenix Ash, she just released her latest book and we did a giveaway for that person. We may be doing more giveaways here on the Cool Black Nerd as well, but you got to stay tuned. You got to be subscribed and all that stuff. You're right. Let's go ahead and call this one an episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to the Cool Black Nerd podcast. Again, check us out on social media. Always go check out SayWhatRadio.com. There are several podcasts in our network that I think everybody would enjoy and love and just have a great time listening to. Always. We out.